Hey, good Monday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Kramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, Hurricane Irma still wrecking havoc on Florida. In real money, you have a lot of stock plays for us. Yeah, and I'm going to uh, continue to hammer this home. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting about this, Mark Scott, is that stocks go down on bad news. And then when the bad news doesn't occur or you get good news, they go up more than they fell. True bull market action. Uh, you take a look at it, Travelers, which doesn't even write property casually in Florida. It went down a great deal. Uh, and then it shoots up very big. Uh, it, it, where I'm going here is, is that you've got a separate entity, like an insurance company, that suddenly takes the role of the federal government. The hmm. states take the role of the federal government. We're so focused on the federal government and what it does, what we don't realize is both the states and the insurance companies will present a tremendous amount of money for the consumer, uh, which means that you can sell stocks like a Home Depot today, mm. but you better start buying them uh, down the road. Uh, road building stocks coming in today, again, because Irma wasn't that bad. These are mistaken way of viewing things. What we have is we have a market that is very forgiving, and when the worst doesn't happen, you get a very nice up move. This is a true bull market action, and uh, I think people have to recognize, particularly those who sell this market short, that the market has very little patience with short sellers. Mm. Uh, you sell the insurers down and then boom, they go right back up. You sell the retailers down, they no longer, if you look at the Kohl's, uh, TJ Maxx, they no longer go down the way that they did. Uh, you sell, uh, let's say, with the exception of say a Kroger, I mean, in certain areas, mm. you know, but you, you sell a 3M down off of Korea, North Korea. North Korea doesn't happen, 3M goes up more. You sell uh, tech down, like uh, off of tech data, and then Lamb Research comes back, Applied Materials come back, Micron comes back, Autodesk comes back, Adobe comes back. These are remarkable moves. And I think that it's all obscured by a sense that nothing good's happening. Uh, the market is very much out of sync with what people think it should be thinking about. Uh, the market has its own tune, and the tune is earnings, mm. and the earnings can be very good. You mentioned road building stocks. It's just sort of an interesting time for Caterpillar to have its analyst yeah, day tomorrow. Yeah, and you know, Caterpillar, a lot of anticipation. There's three, three analysts. There's the Apple launch, there's the Caterpillar right. uh, analyst meeting, there's the Goldman Sachs talk. All, this is again, bull market action. People are buying these stocks ahead. Now that usually means that they will come down tomorrow. Uh, would that shock me? No. But once again, what happens is they go down and then people say, oh, an opportunity. So this is a very opportunity driven market. I haven't seen a market like this in a very long time. And would you put United Rentals in the similar boat as Caterpillar? Uh, United Rentals has run up very big, so it sells off. But the fact is, is the estimates are probably too low for United Rentals. Mike Nealon, uh, having made an acquisition right before uh, the storm in Houston that is going to benefit. Now, they are not Caterpillar. Hmm. Uh, they don't use Caterpillar, but they have a, a, mo a model that's really designed for short-term borrowing of equipment. Well, isn't that exactly what a hurricane can provo provoke? Well, and in real money, you also make this point that this could have imp good implications for the auto sector. Yeah. Does this change I mean, your view of auto stocks Yes, at all? It, it does because, and the reason why it does, just so people understand, is that people is that there may not be flood insurance that's anything other than the federal government, but everybody has auto insurance, and there's hundreds of thousands of cars. So you're going to get a check uh, from a good insurer that will make good, and you're going to go out and buy a new car. Now you could say, well, wait a second, that's a temporary bump. Well, this market again plays the temporary bump and plays it in a positive way. All right, I, I say this all the time, required reading on realmoney.com. Jim, let's move on to Apple. You mentioned it earlier. Are expectations too high heading into this uh, event? The, the uh, Apple is, is, is a stock you should own, not trade, but the traders are out in full force, and I like to be against the traders. Uh, traders who take it up uh, are um, short-sighted because they're gonna then try to blow it out into buyers tomorrow uh, when people see the uh, the longer charge, the charge life, the OLED, which, you know, I've been in favor of universal display, mm. and then sellers come in. And this is a game that I don't want anyone watching to play. Mm. Uh, if you want to buy Apple to invest in it, tomorrow's the day when they sell it down, or maybe Wednesday. There are reports saying the iPhone could cost $1,000. Is that a problem in your view? Um, it's a problem in some countries. It's certainly not a problem in this country where people don't even seem to know how much they pay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's interesting. I have the 7. I love the 7. My wife has the 7 Plus, 
uh, we watch a lot of things on the 7 Plus, which is extraordinary, but it's a big screen. And uh, and I'm it, having just bought the 7 a year ago, I, I'm going to take a hard look at the 8, but anyone who has the 5 or 6, I think it's going to upgrade to the 8 or the anniversary phone, whatever you want to call it. And the reason why is there's been rather dramatic uh, increase in power and speed and in, in photos. And I, I know there are a lot of people who think that Apple hasn't innovated. Where they're making the big mistake is that the innovation's taking place within the phone. It's almost as if people say, unless Apple develops a transponder, beam me up, beam me up Scotty, uh, Apple's done nothing, or a car that is uh, run on water. But what I would tell you is the device has become more miraculous and more miraculous. And that's really what's driving the stock. It's a great, uh, you know, I have uh, Procter & Gamble on tonight. Yes. And Procter & Gamble developed the pod for Tide. And that was actually a radical innovation, and a lot of people use it. Uh, that was a very revolutionary device. Now, Apple is doing evolutionary devices, but if you look at the five versus the eight, it's revolutionary. And Jim, you have David Taylor on. It's such an important time, especially yeah. with Nelson Peltz and all this drama. Well, they have another note out today, and I think that the tone of it is now, wait a second. Uh, David Taylor has done X in the last two years. He's done a remarkable job. What's Tryon done? Uh, and again, there's a lot of trickery with time frame. And I don't mean trickery being fraud. It's just that you can look at a time frame and say that Proctor's underperformed for the last decade. Uh, or you can look at time frame and say Proctor's done an unbelievable job since Taylor came in. You can look at the, at the uh, incredible work that Tryon's done. Or you can say, well, wait a second, try and the last few things they did are General Electric, uh, not so good. And, and what I am saying is, is that you decide. There's a blue card and a white card. Blue card's Proctor, white card's Tryon. Both sides have very compelling stories, uh, and I just want you to know which way. I will come back and say that my loyalty to Proctor has to do with 61 years of increases of dividends. It was the stock that I recommended the most at Goldman Sachs. So it's very hard for me to ever say, well, wait a second, it's doing a really poor job. It did have a period was doing a poor job, which which is certainly within Peltz's purview, but it's got a period where it's doing a very good job, which is Taylor's purview. Depends on your time frame, depends on, depends on your belief uh, of the need for change or whether they're already making change. Uh, last week, Mr. Peltz had a lot of time on Squawk on the Street yes. talking about his view. This will be Mr. Taylor's chance to talk about his view. Um, not to go on too much of a tangent, but are there parallels between this and ADP Ackman? Well, uh, nah, I don't know. I mean, Ackman does a, kind of a surprise attack uh, on a company that's done quite well. Uh, Pelz has a very thoughtful analysis uh, that's going on for some time, uh, and he's asking for a seat, not revolutionary things to do. He wants to bring back the person whose seat he takes. He's not trying to replace the CEO. He's not trying to break up the company. Uh, Ackman's a bomb thrower who makes some good points, frankly, about automatic data and where they are technologically. Um, but uh, Mr. Pelz is much more nuanced and I think in many ways a constructive versus uh, let's just say, um, adversary. Ah, okay, we look forward to your interview tonight, Thank 6 p.m., Mad Money. All right, Jim, I want to move on to Facebook. There was a report that they may spend $1 billion on original content. Yeah, look, I think Facebook, and there's also a note about, uh, about, Al about Alphabet's mm -hmm. YouTube. I think that the challenge that the major networks, Action Alerts owns Facebook and Alphabet, we also own Comcast. Yes. The challenge to the traditional purveyors continues. Mm. The challenge to other purveyors, whether it be Snap and Twitter, continues. Uh, and there's a no doubt a downgrade today on Snap is pretty effective. But what I would talk about, what I would say is that Facebook has almost you know, no gross margin pressure because you develop the content. Now they're gonna give you one more reason to own it, they got a lot of cash. Uh, so I would emphasize Another reason on Facebook, mm. um, it remains a core position for action alerts. Any implications for Amazon, which reportedly they want their own Game of Thrones type There's hit? There's plenty of room for everybody. Now, Amazon uh, and Netflix tend to do well anytime you have shut-in. 
huh. uh, shut in in Houston, shut in in Florida, something to do. And Amazon never loses the customers, apparently, that go and buy it. Uh, there was a very uh, tough Kroger quarter last week, which was then, in, again, indicative of Amazon. You know, Amazon is changing the world. Hmm. Facebook is changing the world. And uh, Netflix is changing the world. I mean, there's a reason why Fang is Fang hmm. is where I'm going toward. These are companies that are um, very forward-looking, very, uh, not just millennial, but for the generation even after millennials, and everyone else playing catch-up. Right, you, you briefly mentioned GE earlier. Deutsche Bank now has a, a new, or reiterating their sell rating. Can you update us on your GE? Yeah, uh, GE is very troubled because uh, I've made a mistake in GE and own it in actual order. I think we can talk about how we have Facebook and Alphabet if you don't talk about GE. Uh, Newell Rubber made, you know, we've done, uh, now Newell Company, we've done bad keeping just a little bit of that, but GE's been a mistake. And the reason why GE's been a mistake is, is that we keep finding that the hand that Jeff Immelt gave Mr. Flannery is so flawed that Flannery can cut costs and cut costs and cut costs. But the nuance here is, is that the dividend remains a priority. Uh, that's different from the dividend is inviolate. So I think people have to understand the reason why the stock's going down is because uh, it does appear to be a value trap. We're going to hold on to it, okay. taking a long-term view that Plannery would do a good job. But it was a mistake to hold on to it from where we have. And one of the things I like to do with Action Alerts is admit to mistakes. I find that most people uh, in our business don't admit to mistakes, and therefore you can't learn from them. Our mistake was believing that the situation with GE was better that Mr. Flannery uh, got. And a lot of that is because I think that the company always told you it was better. Mm -hmm. And I fell prey to that. Uh, and uh, it just shows you when you place an overemphasis on what a company is saying versus the work that was very fine by Deutsche Bank, by JP Morgan, then you can run afoul. I was not skeptical mm -hmm. enough. And that is the lesson. We have a uh, conference call this week on Action Alerts, yes. and I will talk about this. Um, I think talking about mistakes is the single greatest thing I can do. And the reason I can do that is because I have confidence enough based on buying my first stock in 1979 to admit what mistakes I've made. And I tell them to the club because it is a club. Well, and it's such a key part of investing as well. Um, Jim, I do want to acknowledge the 16th anniversary of 9-11, obviously a very somber day here yeah. on the floor. I, I, did, I, was, I did a special last year, on which will run at midnight tonight, oh. 9, 9 p.m. Pacific, uh, CNBC. You know, I was down here, um, but you know what, it's funny. I mean, they've done the rebuild, uh, you walk by it, mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 and the, it's great that they did a rebuild, but there is a museum there that people must go to. And um, there are people who weren't born after it who don't seem to know. I wish it were mandatory. When I was growing up in Philadelphia, we had to go to the Franklin Institute, which was fabulous. We had to go to the art museum. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there should be a pilgrimage to this museum so that people don't forget. I remember uh, my father explaining to me why he volunteered after uh, Pearl Harbor. And, and I think that it's a very similar situation. I, I often find that uh, words are uh, trivial versus what happened, uh, and that's why the museum is more important than anything I have to say. I was down here, and you know, it's funny, I was down here, and the world went black. When when the towers fell, it was just black, and there were, we were where the street is, 14 Wall Street. But you know what? We were safe, and the, the, the fire department was terrific, and they let us out. Uh, and it, you know, there's just uh, there's just a big difference between whether you were in those buildings or the rest of the world. And uh, you just gotta. All I can say is you just have to remember, and you have to teach. Uh, and it's our job to do that. It's our job to teach because the world changed, and I don't think people realize how much the world changed since then. There's a particular room. There's two rooms that are actually there's three rooms in the museum that are incredible. There's the one about uh, right before, what the world was like right before the first towers hit. There's a room that cannot you cannot take children to, which is the jumper room, shows you jumping. And then there's a room where you can look up 
the people who died. And I'm from Summit, New Jersey, and we were particularly, uh, we were a community that really uh, had an inordinate number of people because we're downtown. It, it's easy to go from Summit to downtown. And uh, these are musts, and that's why I say this is not an ordinary museum. I just wish everybody in the country had to go to it. Well said and some powerful words. Jim Kramer, thank you so much. Thank you.